I've heard about Yellowstone my whole life. I can't believe we're actually here in person. This is so magical. We saw the old geyser and falls and all those things. It's breathtaking. You can look at all the photography in the world, but it's not the same as, as touching your foot on the ground. Over four million visitors are coming to the park each year from all corners of the nation and all over the world to enjoy the abundant wildlife, bison, uh, mountain goats, and bears roaming around the park. I'm Marcia Argist. I'm with the Pew Charitable Trust, where I direct the Restore America's Parks campaign. The public doesn't realize, but this infrastructure needs to be maintained. And also, it has almost 800 employees during the high season. Well, have you been enjoying the trip so far? Sure. These employees need housing, and that housing is not in a great state. We have about 70 single white mobile homes in the park that we use for seasonal housing. Some of those uh, trailers are uh, 40 years old. My name is Steve Yost. I retired from the National Park Service a little over two years ago as Deputy Superintendent at Yellowstone National Park. With a harsh environment in a place like Yellowstone, it deteriorates. You have flat roofs that uh, sustain a snow load that cause leaking. The interiors, the flooring um, is coming up. Um, the walls uh, is not what I would consider code construction. There are other structures in Yellowstone that are used for employee housing as well. Uh, many of those structures were built uh, before 1900. This is America's natural and cultural heritage, and it needs to be maintained and kept in a good condition. And it's timely to recognize that um, places like Yellowstone are in need of uh, a boost in funding and attention. This deferred maintenance backlog, it's real. System-wide across our National Park Service, there is a backlog of repairs that now totals nearly $12 billion. And for decades, our park facilities have been underfunded. The needs have stacked up and, and the park now is challenged to keep up with the pace of repairs. Great Smoky Mountains National Park is within a day's drive for half of the U.S. population. My name is Alan Samariski. I'm the Chief of Facility Management at Great Smoky Mountains National Park. Our visitation is greater than 11 million visitors a year. Yeah, you can see this is a common occurrence. You know, the daily traffic on this road, I think, this time of year is probably around 3,500 cars a day. There's a direct correlation between use and deterioration. You can see that the pavement is under stress here by looking at what we would call alligator cracking. In the last two years, we've seen significant deterioration and delamination of the road surface. This top inch and a half is at the end of its life cycle. When vehicles drive off the road, they start to break the pavement edge. If the edge is breaking off, the pavement lane is getting narrower. You'll see a lot of cracking, what we call longitudinal cracking. You know, these are signs that show extreme deferred maintenance. We have almost $190 million of deferred maintenance just on our roadways alone. That accounts for about 80% of our total. Most of our visitors come here by car. They're hoping to have a park-like experience, and part of that is that journey they take along our scenic roadways. It makes sense that that's where our needs are. The Smokies are incredibly inspiring for so many reasons. Um, it's just a park that gets under your skin. I think it's just the ancient mountains. They're the oldest mountains in the world. And so every trail tells an amazing either human story or natural history story. My name is Vesna Placanis. I'm co-owner of a guide service called A Walk in the Woods. So our region is actually a temperate rainforest. People who work for me, they're doing it because they love this area. So if it's something that's not being taken care of, you know, it impacts us personally as well as economically. The Smokies are a billion dollar industry. And 
we would not be here. Gatlinburg Pigeon Forge certainly wouldn't exist if there was not this national park. And so if you're not taking care of this, you're basically, you know, choking out all of these uh, gateway communities. We pride ourselves in Cave City as being the gateway to Mammoth Cave National Park. We have motels, we have restaurants, you know, other attractions that add greatly to the economy. Mammoth Cave National Park is, you know, about everything to this area. This is the first call for the 945 Grand Avenue Tour. Start. Have a great day. The park gives people a reason to come here, and when they're here, they go out into other cities that surround the park. It's something not only for visitors, but it's a sense of pride for our citizens here. It's a two-hour tour. It's two miles long, and we're going to go 310 feet underground. And it's really important that we maintain it to the best of our ability. Oh, wow. We are in Mammoth Cave. This is actually the longest cave in the world. It's over 412 miles of explored passageways. I'm Steve Kovar, and I am the facility manager here at Mammoth Cave National Park. There you go. We bring 500,000 people a year into the park. And so we obviously need a sewer because of all the visitors we have here at Mammoth Cave. The problem we have right now is we're developing leaks. About 15 years ago, our scientists were noticing that there were high levels of E. coli, and that's indicative of having a sewer leak. Obviously, you don't want high levels of E. coli in this section of the cave where you're bringing visitors through. I mean, that E. coli could have been on the, in the water that you're running through here, so we started looking for where that leak was. There was a manhole, and the sewer had plugged up, and the water found a way out of the sewer and then found its way down through the ground and gotten here in the cave. This is one of those rivers that flow through Mammoth Cave. Here in the cave, we've got a Kentucky cave shrimp. We've got two species of fish. Up oh, there's one! And crayfish. It's white because there's no sunlight down here. And we need to make sure that we can protect those things and those somebody 50 years from now can come down here and those natural resources, those crayfish, still exist then as they do today. Coming up in the next year or so, we're going to be replacing the sewer lines that are currently running through the park. In addition, we're adding a notification system. So when a, something were to happen and begin a leak, we're notified instantly on the surface. Parks often operate like small cities and they need to be maintained properly. You know, as Congress is talking about a national infrastructure package. They certainly need to incorporate provisions that include the National Park Service. Um, infrastructure like roads and buildings and water treatment plants. But it's really important that the public make sure that Congress hears from them. You know, we need to be able to get here, we need to be able to see it, we need to be able to, to show our kids this stuff keeping it safe, you know, for everybody, and just sharing this. Almost everyone would say, let's keep our national parks maintained properly. It's a travesty that the current stewards are not preserving America's best idea.